So I want to make my speech a little bit more ayat al hadith and you know mix it with what I have to say. So let's start. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasiban Asu'an Yutraku An Yaqulu Amanna Wa Hum La Yuftanun. Alif Lam Mim. These letters, subhanAllah, are from the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that only He knows what they mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do people think that they will be left alone? Only on their saying, we believe, and they will not be put to test. So you've said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, when I said that, I felt like a ton of bricks was removed from my heart. Like sins were like wiped out. Did you feel that when you said shahada? I'm sure like a lot of you, I probably broke down in tears and cried. True or not? It's like subhanAllah. But you know what? The next day, right after that, it was a different story. And then the next week, and the next month, and the next year, and then, I mean, it was a battle. And for you who didn't have that battle, you might be of those exceptions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has accepted and protected. But most people have faced it. They said, Ashadu wa la ilaha Ashadu wa Muhammad Rasulullah, and boom, the test comes. Like you've been maybe searching for Islam for years, and then you thought that, I'm going to do this shahada today, and you were like shaking, trembling, and the guy or the sister comes to you and says, repeat after me, Ashadu wa la it's like, no, say Ashhadu, right? They're telling you like three, four times repeat. And then you say it, and then boom, the tests start coming. You thought that this is it, I did it, alhamdulillah. Najah, I, I succeeded. And then reality hits, that this is where it actually starts. And people have spent, I know people have spent 20, 30 years of their lives searching for the truth. And then they thought that this call me, it's called I took shahada, this is it. And this is when it starts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do people think that we left alone only on saying Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and we will believe and they will not be tested? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed we have tested those who were before them. Why? So Allah will show who is sincere. And who is amongst those who is not? So these tests are for what? To show your sincerity. Are you? And I'm gonna be very frank. Did you become Muslim for real? Or is it just because like, I don't know. And I'm, please don't take this in the wrong way. I'm putting myself into the same position. Am I Muslim? Because like, I don't know, some video that I saw or something that, you know, for my friend or school, I like the dress or the hijab is really, you know, I feel that it's, you know, liberating or something. Or is it, am I a Muslim because I really believe in Islam? Like, I really believe that this is my salvation and my path to paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it clear. And we know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna break like the rules to them. Because we know that there's some of you here who have friends who have become Muslim, they left Islam. True or not? Put your hand up if you know someone. Yeah, some people are yeah, shy. I know. I've worked with them. I've been working with the Muslims for more than eight years. I know people that I gave shahada to, close people, people used to come pray fajr in the first line, who are now away from Islam, professing some very different faith. I know it. Because Allah tested them. Allah tested them. And I remember one by one of the brothers who used to ride his bike in winters of Canada, coming first row of fajr, praying. In the winters, riding his bike for two kilometers. They used to tell me, Jibreel, I love Islam. If I ever, ever say anything bad about Islam, or I leave Islam, know that I'm lying. He used to tell me that. And now he's a Christian. And I always remind him, remember what he used to tell me? And why did he leave Islam? He had some issues, like he was supposed to marry some sister, and she refused him, and he got all depressed, and blah, 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 and then he says, you know, this is not fair, I don't think it's the truth of us. Are we real in our Islam? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show. He knows, he wants to show it to you and to the rest. So patience, 
how do we deal? Because this is what requires patience. This test. Okay? The people before will try it, so you'll be trying. The prophets were tried. The prophets were put into so many difficulties. Believers. So how come we were, you know, just move on and go, you know, walk nice and dandy and think that everything's fine? This requires patience. So, and I'm not going to go into the linguistic means. It has a more than just patience. But as Imam Qayyim, Allah says that there's three types of patience. There's patience in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His orders. It's not easy to wake up for fajr. Okay, you want to hit that snooze button, the shaitan button, and now shaitan's telling you, take it easy, you have five minutes, and then just went, it's okay, you know, you have to work at seven, you know, Allah is kareem, is rahman, rahim, no problem, take a break today. You have to have patience with obeying Allah. Fast, you know, man, you're gonna, you know, starve yourself, it's gonna be hard, it's hot, you have to have patience with obeying Allah. You know, you're being offered that job, there's some riba in it, some usury, some interest, but you really need that money. You know, you have to have patience. Then the second, staying away from sin. Allah, this is the hardest one. I'm not even going to pretend here. I'm going to be straightforward. This is the hardest one. Staying away from it. The temptations that are around us today, everywhere, walk out, in wherever, is temptation, sin. Everything's calling you towards sin. And a lot of us listen. And we go towards it. And it's so difficult, you know. And that pain of the sin, as some scholars said, it's better to endure the pain of refraining from it. Because you want something so bad. And it's so hard. You're like pushing yourself like, oh, I really like that sister. I really like that brother. Man, I really want to be invited for a movie or a dinner. It's my chance. You know, it's like, you really want it. And it's it's hurting. But the pain of that sin, of committing that sin, is going to be worse. So the scholars say, it's better to have the pain of staying away from the sin than the pain of the sin. And the worst thing is that, that pain of the sin will slowly decrease and decrease and decrease till it disappears. And this is where the problem is. Where you don't feel it anymore. It's like, you know, Claire, it's not a big deal. It's the worst one. And the third one that today we'll be focusing on is patience during trials, tribulations, difficult times. This is the one that we will talk about today. Now, brothers, sisters, we are here, alhamdulillah, in the UAE. Some of you are coming from the Philippines, some of you are coming from Africa. Some of you are coming from places where there's war. We are here like, alhamdulillah, it's not a big deal. We're, you know, it's a good life. It's a decent life. People around the world are suffering, starving. People are eating their own pieces for subhanAllah. People are living on nothing. People are dying and being killed day and night. This is trials, tribulations. Sometimes at the smallest problem we fold and we despair. I want to tell you that affliction, difficulties are related to Qadr. Can someone tell me what is Qadr? What is Qadr? Predestination. Okay? Might be a wrong translation, but in the meaning of the sense, that's something that might qualify. And this is part of the six articles of faith that we should know. And we should even know in Arabic. As we know, do we know the five pillars of Islam in, in Arabic? Anyone? Ashadu? What is it? Shahadatu la ilaha illallah? Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah? Salah, Ita'u Zakah, Sawm Ramadan, Hajjul Bayt, and Mr. Ta'i Lay Sabir, Okama Kala Lay Sansa. Okay, we should know this. Okay, six articles of faith. Anyone? I have a little song that helps me. 
أمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله واليوم الآخر. يا مجدا والقدر خيره والشره من الله. سأمنت بالله بليف الله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر. والقدر خيره والشر من من الله. So belief in Allah, the angels, the books, the messengers, the day of judgment, Qadr, or the sisters and predestination, the good and the bad. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our belief. Okay? This is our belief. Anything that happens to you in your life, any difficulty, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this test that is coming from you, or for you. Allah, whether... You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who allowed it to happen. Allah is the one who allowed it to, for this to take place. For the reason that He subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this is how we should understand this point. A Muslim will never, I repeat this, I, I have a psychology background. A Muslim, a real believer, will never need a psychologist. You'll never need to go to a shrink. You'll never need to go for mental health check. I'm not saying don't go. I'm saying that a real Muslim. Because these problems come usually for you something. Someone dies, something happens, loss of job. SubhanAllah, people commit suicide. But the Muslim will say Alhamdulillah in times of good. And you'll say what? Or she'll say, say Alhamdulillah in times that are not so good. Because he knows that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, is good for him or her, whether she knows or doesn't know. And how many times, brothers and sisters, you sit now today here and you think back and you say, wow, I remember that time where this thing really happened. And so if like, that wouldn't happen and I thought it was so bad at the time, I wouldn't be here today. You know, I thought at that time that it was not good for me. It's alhamdulillah that it happened. I was crying, I was complaining, whatever. But now that I look back at it, maybe two, three years, five years, ten years, now I really understand that that was something good, that there was a lesson in it, that I learned, that I am today who I am because of that thing. True or not? So this is this next hadith is how we should approach life and we should understand the issue of Qadr. Abdullah ibn Abbas, I'll read it in Arabic and translate it, قال, كنت خلف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال عبد الله بن عباس who was a very young companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he says that I was in the back of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم one day he was riding a horse or something or right so subhanAllah imagine that he's on the same saddle with رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he's teaching him Yes, not teaching him to sit in a classroom, not teaching him to sit on a chair, teaching him in real life. And that's something that we are losing today, that we're, you know, we're teaching only like classroom stuff. And the Prophet Sam didn't do that all the time. And he says, Papa, yeah, ulan. Oh boy. Inni I will teach you some words. Take care of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will take care of you. Take care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of His rights, you will find Allah in your direction. Look at this, this is very important. If you ask anyone, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people today, oh this person, they're praying to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're praying to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching, uh, the Prophet is teaching aqidah, is teaching the correct belief. If you want to ask anyone, you want to pray to anyone, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you want to ask for something, anything you need, you want money, you want children, you want a job, you want health, Whatever it is, material, not material, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. 
Ask him. Yes, tie your camel, no doubt. Go work, go out there, do things. Ask Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go to the corner where no one can see you. Put your head down. Let your tears flow and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Do you really want that thing? Ask Allah because He's the one and only who can give it to you. No one else. No one else. Even that person who gave you that job. If Allah wouldn't give him the voice to speak to say, here's your job, you have the job, you would not be able to do it. If you ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you rely upon anything or anyone, rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times we put our trust in other people? Brothers, sisters, this is Iman. You want to do something? You go into this thing and say, I have firm belief that I can do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me. Like this is a pure relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I always tell my Christian friends, I say, I'm sorry, you guys are losing out because you guys have like, you know, there's Jesus in between. And we love Jesus, alayhi salam. But they always, they always explain this like, you know, like the bridge and there's you and there's God and then the bridge is Jesus taking it to God because you're not so pure to reach God so you need Jesus to it. And I say, man, I feel bad for you guys. Because for us, our love is directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our prayers, our sacrifice, our living, our dying, everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess what? Jesus is with us. He's also in the same, he's praying, he's loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping like we are worshipping. Put your faith and truth and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know and the ummah, if the ummah the whole people, the whole mankind, everyone, every single person with their strength and whatever they have, their resources, armies, you name it, whatever it is, the whole world comes together against you. What's your name, brother? Swayam. Swayam. If they come against this brother, the whole world, all of us here, including the whole country, the whole world come against this brother. To do what? And the ummah, لو اجتمع على أن أن ينفعك بشيء لا ينفعك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله قد كتبه الله لك. يعني سبحان الله says that if the ummah, everyone, they get together. To benefit you for anything, they will not be able to benefit you. Except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written. If everyone's trying to do anything for you, they'll not be able to. Except with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. Walau an law ishtama ala ayyaduruka to make something against you. Bishayin lam yadurruka illa bishayin qad kataba Allah la. Except, and if the whole ummah, every single person in this world will gather around against you. What's your name, sister? What's your name? Yes. Against sister Amina. The whole world is against sister Amina. They will not be able to accept for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet said, Rufiyat al-Aqlam wa jaffat al-Suhuf. The pens have been lifted and the pages have tried. It's done. Allah has written it already. Everything that you will do, that you will not do, that you thought about doing and you didn't do, that you could have had option A, B, C, D, E, F, and you didn't do this, you picked this one, but then you change your mind. Allah knew all the outcomes of all these things and written it because He is al He knows all things. And He has ordered the pen, write everything that will happen. 50,000 years before the creation, Allah has written. And if you wouldn't have, He goes, how did Allah not know then what's the point? It's for you to establish. Imagine things would have happened without, without us being created. We would have said, Ya Allah, how come? 
How come, Ya Allah? Allah created us, so we know Him. Allah created us, so we do things. Allah created us, so we love Him. Allah created us, so we obey Him. Allah created us to worship Him. Allah created us because, yes, He loves us. If we turn to Him, subhanAllah, you will not find anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pants have been lifted, the pages are dry. This hadith Rawat Tirmidhi wa Ahmad. This is how we look at life. Nothing, nothing can touch you except Allah's will. So if something happens to you, Alhamdulillah. If something good happens to you, Alhamdulillah. Go in life with this mentality. Don't be scared. You know, people talk, life coaches, psychologists, trainers, trainers, you know, always have confidence. Confidence in what? We can't hold ourselves from going to the washroom for more than a few hours. Yes, have confidence in you, no doubt. Allah teaches you that. But first, teaches you to have confidence in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe in Him. Allah is surprised that you'll be like almost as if you're invisible in the eyes of human beings because you don't care what will happen to you. Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it for you. You will not be scared walking in with like some fear. I don't know. What is this? Nothing. Whether it's your job, career, whatever it is. You will not be scared. Nothing. It's your studies, given down to your parents, whatever it is. Facing that you know person who's been taunting you for years, whatever it is. All those skeletons that we have in our closets will be able to face them if we think the way the Prophet taught Ibn Abbas. Imagine if you have that confidence and you walk through life with them. And we can develop them. And that's why you find that this small group of Arabs became the leaders of the world. Because when Khalid and Walid went to battle, he was not scared. When Omar Khattab went to battle, he was not scared. When some of the Sahabiyat, the women, went to battle, they were not scared. Or anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Tessa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yes, you'll be tested. You'll be tested. Situations where you're scared, we you feel the fear, yes. You run away, no, you face it. Job, family, whatever it is, you face it. You face it. You say, I'm doing that. It's already, this, it's already, I've already written it, no problem. I'm here, I'm doing it. I'm not gonna walk away. I'm not gonna walk away. Hunger, yes, I think a lot of us, Maybe face hunger in our lives. To be faced with that. Loss of wealth. Why Allah is saying that? Imagine people are looking, you know, people leaving faith. Or the Christians, Muslims, whatever they are. They see, you know, some catastrophe, tsunami, uh, tornado, something happens. Where is God? How can God do this? SubhanAllah. Allah is testing them. Instead of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding that that so called trial and tribulation brought all that help and relief. People coming back to their deen. Countries that have been tested by war or hunger or strife, they didn't know anything about Islam. And then people from all over the world poured in to help them and support them. Muslims went, taught them their deen, and subhanAllah, they said, Alhamdulillah that this tsunami came, you know? Alhamdulillah that this thing happened, because my iman is now firm. We need to understand, you know, we can't have this narrow view about life. 
and lives. Yes, some of us will die. Some of our that's the reality is some of our families will die. Our children, maybe some of us are will be that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek refuge in him. Maybe we'll bury our children before they bury us. This is this reality? People wail and say, Where is Allah? How do they Allah will test. And he says, give that tidings to the nation. Those who, when suffering comes to them, they say, we certainly belong to Allah and to Him we are bound to return. Not only when someone dies, in every calamity, the first thing that you should say, something and you lost your job, you don't have food, something happened in your family, don't have too much time. So what kind of doubts? What kind of tests do Muslims? Something very important. A test in faith. Why, brothers and sisters, this is the worst test or the hardest test you can go through. To be tested in your Iman. That after you have accepted Islam, Shaitan comes to you and says, like, did you do the right choice? Like, are you sure? Are you really sure you're, you know, you're Muslim? Shaitan comes and whispers these things. So doubts creep. Shubahat. They creep into the hearts. And some people help at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُبْلَعُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَنْفُسِكُمْ وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَانٍ كَثِيرًا وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُ وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ حَسْمِ الْأُمُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Of course you shall be tested with your wealth, with yourselves, and of course you shall hear hurting statements from those who have been given the book before you, and from those who are mushrikeen, who associates with Allah, partners. But if you observe patience and fear Allah, then observance is amongst the matters of firm resolution. Yes, you'll be tested. Some of you know, your friend, they heard you became Muslim. Oh, take this book, come speak to my priest. Let me tell you, look what this internet site is saying. Islam is not good. These guys are terrorists. Look at this, look at that, look what's happening. People are specializing these things today. This is one of the things that I that we do at Iqra, is that we respond to a lot of these allegations. Why this? Why that? Why Islam says this? Why the Quran says that? Why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Aisha radiallahu anha? Why that? Why that? All these doubts that people try to come to. It's like they're trained and they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will hear from what? From who? From the people of the book. Yes, Christians, Jews, missionaries, all over. Here, yes, here. Everywhere. And the mushrikeen attacking Islam on the news. And everywhere. Open the news. Open the newspapers. Open YouTube. Open the popular channels. How many news and media issues have to deal with Muslims. Good stuff? Do they say about, yeah, here and there. Do they talk about, you know, feeding so many people and doing so many? Here and there, maybe Ramadan, not a special. But in general, in the world, it's always like this happened here, this guy did this, this person did this, honor killing here, and when this happened here. SubhanAllah. Always trying to put doubts in the hearts of the Muslims. You know, they oh, you know. And then they come to like, hey, sure. Like, are you sure you're, you know, you're Muslim? Are you sure you did the right choice? And Allah, brothers, sisters, we stand firm and we say, Yes, we did the right choice. We know this is the right choice. Another test, old habits. Old habits is something that will come after you. For the sisters, men, for the brothers, women, from the past, the fitna. For some people, drinking. Yes, alcohol. Yes, we used to have new Muslims coming sometimes to the masjid drunk in Canada. Friends. Friends. Old friends. Who will come and say, come on, man. Remember those good times that we used to have. Why are you so strict right now? You're wasting your life. You're so young, so beautiful, strong. Come. Just come, just once, for old sake's time. Let's do it. And the Prophet said, that the person is on the way of his friends. So let every one of you be careful who he takes as a friend. 
family. Mom finds out he became Muslim. Dad finds out he became Muslim. What did you do, son? You disrespected our family. You, dis you know, you disowned. I don't want to talk to you ever. So you leave this nonsense of Islam. Some of us don't even tell them. We're scared to tell them. We're scared to hide it. I used to know people who used to pray and hide it in the closet and stuff like that for years. I know people who've been beaten by the broom. Kicked while making sujood. How do we deal with family? How do we break it down? How do we give them doubt? How do we tell them? How do we share this peace that we have achieved for Islam with them? This is one very important question. Materialism, loss of jobs, loss of things. It's like, subhanAllah, I became Muslim and all of a sudden it's like, I don't have money anymore. All these things are happening. You know, I cannot, I, I wear a hijab, sorry, you cannot have this job. Or you have a beard, um, you know, sorry, we like like clean, you know, we need to have like, look. So now you're finding it hard to practice Islam and be able to provide for yourself. And Shaitan comes and says, man, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Look at this, what's the big deal? Little credit card here, little interest there, 5%, 2%, not a big deal, come on. Take it easy, it's okay, you can take that job, like you don't have to really wear a hijab, like you can just like, you know, just put like tight clothes on. You can just wear a hijab with prayer, you know, the beard, not a big deal. Don't be so strict, right? So people start making so-called concessions in their faith. Ah, I mean, oh, there's, there's a need, I need it, what can I do? It's a test. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open a way for them. And He'll provide for them from a place that they don't even know. You will know, I know I'm sure more than many of you, in some points you're so tight with money, with life, that you're like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if I'm gonna eat tomorrow. And you got offered that thing, it's like, come on, just like, you can just be at the front, like, you know, we sell alcohol, but you're not gonna be involved, you just work, and you know, there's a little bit in, indirect, you know. And he said, no. In your health of life, you're Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next day, like something good happened to you. And you just like, your whole life changes, and come to everything's good. Because that you just held back from the haram, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for you another way. A lot of, I know a lot of people just like, you know, they became Muslim, just like, you know, I'm done with all this haram, yeah, plus. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them, and gives them more even. SubhanAllah. How do we deal with such things? One hadith. Because, you know, people say, well, that's fine, and patience, like, you know, some people are born very patient, it's part of their nature, right? And some people are just not. So the Prophet of Sim says, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يَصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ يعني whoever, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يَصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ Whoever, in, to translate yeah, the meaning, but if you train yourself to have patience, it will become second nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it a training. It's not easy. Something happens, it's like you just feel like screaming. You feel like the whole world is collapsing. Think, consciously prepare for it. See how it is. It's an exercise, a psychological exercise. Prepare for it. Be like, you know what? If the next time I get a bad news, I'm just gonna like keep myself tight and I'm gonna say, Inna Allah, Allah. whether I mean it or not, whether it's gonna be sincere or not, I'm gonna say it. Just keep it in your mind. Like really consciously think about it. In the next time, any small thing, you get a little bad news here or some hard work, and just get used to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi And see what will happen. Small patience, your kids are screaming, okay? A person came to the and said, Oh, Tini, advise me, call it that, that, don't get angry. Okay? Next time your kids are screaming or someone's angry, you're a friend of yours is saying something, just really push yourself and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa I'm not going to say anything. Just in the day, I don't have patience. Even though you feel like just you got to throw some chairs around or scream or get very angry, you're going to say it. You know, just close your eyes. Even people are like, what's wrong with you? You have some problems? Just see. And you find the next time it will become easier. 
someone's backbiting, saying, you know, this uh, Aisha girl, she's like this, and she said that. Say, I don't need to hear, I'm sorry. I don't care if it's true or not true. In both cases, it is haram. It's a one of the bad sin, horrible sin, and I'm not going to do it. It's very easy to just sit there and be like, mm, yeah, and you get into it, right? Very easy. You might. It's normal. Have patience. Next time you hear the mention of someone's name and they're not there, and it starts with some negative a bit, turn around and see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easier and easier for you. Slowly, slowly, waking up fudging. Not easy. First time, you push yourself. Jump out of bed. Yes, jump. Put three alarm clocks. You know, I record my voice on the phone. Wake up. Like this, you know. Put something, adhan. If you cannot hear the adhan, something. The, uh, sometimes, you know, people say, I put the adhan, it's not working. I'm not waking up. Put something that wake you up. Push yourself. Jump out of bed. When you hear that first alarm in your conscience, jump out of bed. Run to the bathroom, to the washroom, and make wudu. Push yourself. You slowly, 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 it will become easier and easier. I still have. Just give me question time. Okay, give me like just five minutes, please. It says here Q and A time, but I will ignore this. May Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive me and forgive me. I celebrate those because. It's like, Okay, so how, how can I, now I talked about the problems. Okay, how do we solve these problems? Few things. Listen, the fard, the faraid, these are not something that we should say, Alhamdulillah, I pray in the masjid for the brothers. Alhamdulillah, I pray my five prayers. I'm such a good Muslim. No. These are not standards to, to show. This is just given. It should be done. The, the Sahaba didn't say, oh, mashallah, this guy prayed in the masjid today. It's like, no, it's given. This is like the basics. The fard is just a basic. It's in the sunan and the other extra things that you do that you will differentiate yourself. So what can we do for patience specifically? What can we do to get to have patience? The most beloved and the best prayer after the fard is, what is it? Who can tell me? What is the best prayer after the fard prayers? Someone? What? With them. It is a very important one. The process of advice is not to ever give it up. But what is the best prayer after fun? Hajjud. Hajjud. Yes. Okay. Praying at night. No one is watching you. This is not a congregation. This is not with your friends. Next to Allah, Quran, feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder. You adjust yourself, make sure everything is good. Someone's coming in, posture changes. SubhanAllah. It's you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the person who will shed tears and they are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the eyes, the, the fire will not touch them. The person who is able to cry for the fear of his Lord in privacy, alone. This is something. And SubhanAllah, sometimes, you know, we're all together praying together. One starts crying, the other one starts crying. Everyone's crying. MashaAllah, it's good. But it's hard to cry when you are alone. So go for Qiyam al -Layl. Because Qiyam al is what will help you. Qiyam al was the fuel of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil umil layla illa qalila nisfahu wa min usmin qalila aw zid alayhi wa raqtil al-Qur'an tawqila Allah Oh, you wrapped in clothes. Stand at night for prayer except a little. Half of it or make it a little less. Or make it a little more. And recite the Quran clearly with a beautiful voice. With Tartil. Tartil al-Quran. Tartil. Why? Inna sanurki alayka tawlan. Tartil. You will reveal to you a speech. What kind of speech? A heavy speech. What is this? What is this? What speech is heavy? Someone can tell me. The Quran. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشيا متصديا من خشية الله. Allah says that if this Quran was revealed 
on a mountain, you would have seen it like crumble. What about us? What about our hearts when the Quran is recited? What about when we read the Quran? Do we feel like our hearts tremble? Because the mountain is ready to crumble. The mountain, the, the symbol of strength. When you look at a mountain, you feel like in awe. The, look at the Himalayan mountains, K2. What about our hearts? Reading the Quran, waking up for the Hajjah, making that prayer is what will give you that strength. This is what gave the Prophet. Allah is telling him, this is what you do because I'll reveal to you the Quran. And this Quran requires training, patience. We are the ones who are carrying this Quran now. We are the ones who are in charge of this Dawah. But to have this Sabah requires sacrifice. And Qiyam Layl is one of those sacrifices. Fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us now with Ramadan. Ya ladina amana kutiba alayhim siyam. Ramadan is coming. Fasting. Fasting other than Ramadan. Monday and Thursday. Fasting the white days. Da'wah. Ballighu anni walaw ayah. Give da'wah. This will give you strength, patience, charity, social work. Serve others, brothers and sisters. Don't think that if you became Muslim, people will serve you. You go and serve people. Ask, what can I do for Islam? Not what Islam can do for me. Be in the service of your brother. And remember, yes, there's patience. Yes, there's trials and tribulations. But the ones who were tested the most were the prophets. Prophet Wasallam beat. Prophet Wasallam stoned. The prophets, some of the prophets killed. We learn from these brothers and sisters. Remember those. And I want to end with this beautiful verse. Allah SWT says, Ya ladina amanu, bisbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqu Allah, la'allakum tafihun. Or you believe, be patient, compete with each other in patience, and guard your frontiers, and fear Allah, so that you may be successful. This is and have patience. But guess what? Other people can have patience too. Non-Muslim can have patience. Bufar can have patience. Wa sabiru wa ayat even more. It's a shed. Have patience. I mean, guard your frontiers, whether it's your, where you live or whether it's the, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even other people can do that. But then, what taqullah? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not everyone can do that except the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the sabirin. Inna Allah na sabirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who have patience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make some of those with us from Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us go through the trials and tribulations with Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to go through our issues. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and guide and protect all the Muslims all the world. Inshallah, there's a few minutes for questions. Okay, actually I'll not ask them. I'm going to ask questions. Because I really want, if there's any uh, questions that anyone has, even one or two that, and I, you know what, the one why I'm doing this is because I know that usually if a new Muslim has a question, it's like all of them, replies to all of them. So does anyone have any questions? And if you don't, then I'll have a question, I guess. Anyone have a question? No, okay, so then there is a question? Okay, sister. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I think someone wants to embrace this man. Faith will be tested. Um, how 
can you differentiate between obedience and testing? Because you must be obedient to your slave, which is uh, right? Your Lord. I, I, I need to differentiate between obedience and being tested by your religion or your faith. So let me now understand correctly. So how do you differentiate between obedience of us and in being tested or in your religion or your faith being tested? Okay. So obedience of Allah obviously this has to deal with what is halal and what is haram, right? So Allah subhanahu is ordering you uh, to not to be alone with the men, okay? A lot of people today, they work with uh, men and women work and mingle together. And sometimes in offices and places, you have to be alone, right? So it's not easy. You might be chastised at work. That why you like this. So, you know, it'll cause problems for you. It'll cause stress and issues in your office. But you still basically say, no, I obey Allah, Allah SWT says that if a woman and I are together, third in the shaitan, it's not allowed. So the Sahaba asked about this, the Prophet said, even if it's with Maryam with the mother of Jesus, you wouldn't be left alone, amen? So, you know, you have patience in that. Whatever happens, whatever consequences, if you say, no, I'm a Muslim, this is not allowed, if I'm a shaitan, do what you want. If you don't respect what I believe, I'm a good worker, I do my work. Step, this is what I believe. I'm not gonna, you know, come on, don't worry, maybe we can we'll fire if you don't give in to this. Come on, you have to go with this guy and that guy. You have to be. Say, no, I'm sorry, do what you want. This is patience in obeying Allah SWT. Patience in your in being tested with your faith. These are, as I said, doubts, things that people will say about Islam, um, issues that can come to your mind or you know, your, your, your heart after they accept Islam. And these are very difficult because it might end in you uh, leaving Islam. All right, we have to believe. And we always have to. Uh, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't distract people and it's just like, you know, that I just, you know, there's something that these people are doing and their hearts are not sincere or they're not obeying Allah properly and they're not making toba that they're this, that this guidance will, will come from it. So this is a benefit and it's a test. It's, it's something that happen. You know, we have to pray and we always have to analyze, well, why am I having issues in my faith? Why am I not praying properly? Why am I not, why am I doubting? Why am I in this issue? Look at the rest of it. Am I doing something wrong? And that's something very important. Okay, sister. Right, so the sister's gonna take uh, I don't know, uh, brothers do. Um, she lost it. Okay, the sister, it's not like How are you? Your name? Ruby. Ruby, okay. Alhamdulillah, you understand Islam. Inshallah. Inshallah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, it's very important that you understand Alhamdulillah. And obviously you're not going to know everything from the beginning, but Alhamdulillah, as long as you, as you know and you believe uh, that the main things, and the basics, this is, you know, your first thing, step, and then you slowly learn. And um, it's very important that sisters who are with you, that you take care of. They don't just, you know, come to God, give a shout out to many people, but what happens after? This is the question. I'm always stressing this. And we're talking here, the brothers are talking. It's like we can't always small up. You know, people call me and say, brother, please take care of it. We can't. We're like the first run, sometimes giving down, people are taking shout Other people have to step up for support. It can't be just, you know, the same people talking and also taking care of everyone. People need to step up. People who have gone to understand, who are from the same background, who have gone through this process, you need to support and take place. Sister, you understand this point. Yes. You understand what the main tenets of Islam are. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, uh, repeat after me. It's very simple. Alhamdulillah. I believe that you already, you already have your faith in your mind. Alhamdulillah. They say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. And that. Ilaha. 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 Wa ashhadu. Anna. Muhammad. Muhammad, Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no deity deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam peace be upon him is his servant, is his servant and his messenger. messenger. As you know, sister, when you say that, you become a Muslim, alhamdulillah. You believe in that Allah is one and only. There is no one else to be worshipped except Him. 
We also believe that Muhammad is his servant, his messenger. We also believe that Jesus is his servant, his messenger, and Moses, and all the prophets from Adam till Muhammad said, peace and blessing be upon all of them. They are the prophets of Allah who came with the same message. There's only God to be worshipped. Were you Christian before? Yeah. yeah. See, subhanAllah. You know, Dr. Lawrence Brown says something beautiful in his book, The First and Final Commandment. He said, the Shahada is that first commandment that was given to Moses. He says, I am your Lord, thy God, thou shalt not have any gods except me. And this is something you are returning to that commandment that you are waiting for. So rejoice that Alhamdulillah, you are Muslim now, Alhamdulillah, and Allah subhanahu wa forgave all your sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you, inshallah, with his love and his mercy and protection. And rejoice, subhanAllah, that you didn't lose Jesus. You actually now know him who he really is. I always stress this, brothers and sisters, you don't lose Jesus. People try to tell you, oh, you know, my, my son's name is Jesus. My daughter's name is Mary because we love them. We follow them. We pray like them. And alhamdulillah, now you have entered the family of Muslims to accept the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that Jesus himself foretold that he will come. Ahmed, Allah Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa protect you. I really urge the sisters to take care of the sisters, please. I know you know how it is. My last one that I give you strength. I think that, inshallah. Thank you so much for Allah bless you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes, sister, go ahead. No problem. First of all, I'd like to, uh, I would just uh, like to apologize if my question is a little bit away from the topic. But <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, if, for example, you already engage a man and uh, a woman, must is it uh, okay yani, to communicate with each other or what instance or only what in what situation can you only communicate? To, to the other okay. uh, it's not that I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not that I, I'm, you know, even if I know the answer, I'm not uh, able to. Inshallah, is Shaykh Mansal here? He's here? So this, they're asking, I need to give you some, you know, uh, because I don't, uh, okay, if you don't mind. So you were either brothers anywhere, you're going to the, uh, the, the center usually, right? Or something, right? So you ask, Inshallah, the, the brothers who are working there and they have been you know, access to the who are qualified to give the answer, inshallah. I'll just stick to what I'm qualified, inshallah. Allah bless you. That's it, inshallah. Okay, Zakul Khan. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Zakul Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.